Welcome to class. I'm Trevor, and I post D&D videos every week, generally on Wednesdays. In this video, I want to do my review for Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft, the newest D&D supplement for 5th edition. Before I get into my actual review of the book, I want to preface with a couple of things. First and foremost, I am primarily a homebrew DM. I make up my own worlds, and my own adventures, inspired a lot of the time by other things that exist. But I don't have a lot of experience. I've never run Curse of Strahd. I don't know Ravenloft prior to 5e. That is not my domain, pun intended. Second thing, in terms of me personally, horror is not my jam. Uh, it's just not my genre general. <laughs> That's not my genre generally. That's a tongue twister. Uh, I just, when my wife and her friends are watching horror movies, I'm normally planning D&D games. And normally our D&D sessions are more lighthearted and more comedic and more heroic. Think more like Marvel films uh, than like horror flicks. Uh, there are some exceptions to this. I am a pretty big fan of the Twilight Zone. Uh, horror in that sense I do enjoy, but in general, not, not really my favorite genre. That said, I still do want to do a review of this book. I did pick it up. If you want a deeper dive into this book, uh, there are kind of two options for this. I will recommend and link uh, Fry Mini's reviews of each of the sections of this book. He does, he's done some pretty excellent deep dives into the different character options and classes and things like that. So I'll include a link to that in this. And if there's any interest in me doing something similar, I'm happy to. This is just going to be a more holistic view of the book and what's provided in it rather than specific deep dives. So with that out of the way, let's talk about Van Richten's. Now, the book is split up into five chapters, and that's kind of how I'm gonna loosely break up the review. The first chapter is character creation. The second is creating domains of dread. The third is the domains of Ravenloft. The fourth chapter is horror adventures. And the fifth chapter is monsters of Ravenloft. I'm gonna start with my uh, biggest gripe with the book, although it might be specific to me, and that is chapter three, the domains of Ravenloft. Although I really appreciate their inclusion, and I think they do set up a lot of good examples and they help flesh out that world, I found a lot of it a bit of a slog and it was, I don't know, I don't know how to phrase it exactly. I liked it conceptually, I liked it as a springboard um, for ideas, but I think that there are other elements of the book that do that better. And because I don't plan on necessarily playing in Ravenloft, I plan on using this more as an idea for homebrew adventures, um, the, the depth that they went into in chapter three wasn't really my jam. I think that although I found a gripe with it, I think a lot of players might actually really like it or a lot of DMs might actually really like it. So take my um, kind of feedback with a grain of salt in that regard. If you do, if, you, if you've run Curse of Estrad or you like that like world that Watsi's creating, uh, and they're fleshing out further for 5th edition, then I don't think you might have as much of a problem with it as I do. I didn't necessarily dislike it. I thought maybe it was just a bit specific and a bit long for a world that I wasn't necessarily planning any adventures in. In terms of what I did like from this book, I'm going to start with chapter 2, which is the domains of dread and creating a domain of dread. I loved that this book went through all different genres of horror, Body horror, cosmic horror, dark horror, folk tales, ghost stories, gothic horror, disaster horror. There are a number of them. And for someone who's not a huge fan of the horror genre, I thought that being able to explore all of these concepts and see all these things written out made me realize like there are some things about that that I could see including in a 5e game, even if the whole game necessarily wasn't a horror focus. Most of all, and this is why this section comes first in my kind of review or the positive parts of my review, there are a couple of examples in this book of how uh, how deftly Watsi is handling fairly touchy subjects with the publication of Ravenloft. What I'm referring to, um, there's something on page 46 in the body horror section, the last bullet point in the body horror section. The genre has a history of portraying disability as monstrous. Be aware of those tropes and avoid them. On the next page, in the cosmic horror section, it says, and this is the last bullet point there, the genre has a history of flame framing marginalized demographics as monstrous and stigmatizing mental illness. Be aware and avoid those tropes. I cannot talk about how incredible it is to see that written explicitly in a like published 
uh, adventure published book from Wizards of the Coast. It's absolutely incredible. Um, now, uh, I think that it's incredible. Um, it's a step in the right direction and maybe a step that should have been taken earlier. But I think it's an awesome inclusion where it's it's not it's it's blatant, right? These are things that we should address and, and not fall prey to. We shouldn't fall prey to um, the kind of tropes and cliches that have played these genres uh, for years. So I really appreciated that in in the like exploration of these different genres. Another part of this book that I really liked was the character focused material, specifically the lineages. Uh, which are Dampier, Hexblood, and Reborn. I can go into more depth on these in a separate video if there's interest, but the long and short of it is these are uh, selections you can pick essentially instead of races, or if you pick them in addition to a race, then you just kind of change how some of the modifiers work. And Dampier are a uh, half vampire, Hexbloods are related to hags, and Reborn are essentially zombies. So if you want to play these horror races, or horror lineages, to use the correct terminology, you were able to do so in a game. And I think that this stuff could be included, all of these things actually, could be included in games that are not just specific to Ravenloft or even specific to horror settings. And I'll get to an example of that uh, before I finish up this video. After that, there are some examples of dark gifts. I love this. They are additions that your character can get. There's Echoing Soul, Gathered Whispers, Living Shadow, which is very much like kind of a Peter Pan-esque, your shadow can do things. Sometimes the things it does might not be what you want. There are other examples as well. I love this kind of stuff because it adds additional um, power and flavor to a character, but it comes at a cost. And that stuff is super cool. There is additional subclasses, specifically uh, from UA. There's the College of Spirits Bard and the Undead Warlock. I don't know too much, like I haven't played with an Undead Warlock, but I, I do have a player who's been playing the College of Spirits Bard and it's a blast. She's been having a great time with it. I'm glad that they changed it. What they've changed in it hasn't like wasn't a lot, uh, but they changed some of the phrasing for how the bard's um, kind of tarot deck uh, mechanic works. It's an additional way they can use their inspiration, and there's a sense of random chance associated with it. And I know that there was some confusion with how that worked uh, in the UA version. In addition to those two subclasses, there are also uh, a couple of backgrounds. There is the uh, haunted one and investigator for specific backgrounds. And then there are some general background ideas uh, that are included as an example of backgrounds that could show up in horror themed campaigns. I love the haunted one as a background uh, primarily because when I've, I've done a project in my classes before where I've had students create a character sheet for a particular character in a piece of literature we're reading and the haunted one background references Heart of Darkness, the novel, which is a text that I used to read in one of my classes. And I've also it also is pretty fitting for making a character based off of Hamlet from Hamlet uh, for a lot of reasons. Maybe I'll get to get into those in a separate video at some point. But I really love the class specific features in this book. Uh, and I think that, like I said, they can work in a horror campaign. And some of them can definitely work in a flavored even just slightly differently in any campaign that you would run uh, for 5e. So I don't think they're limited just to Ravenloft. The monster section at the end of the book, chapter five, there's actually an adventure included in this book as well. Uh, but the monster section at the end of the book is great. Uh, the Bagman is absolutely incredible. And that is something that I plan on including in my games just from now on. Like, I love that. I think that that kind of almost Slenderman-esque villain or creature that can just, oh, I just, I love it. I don't want to go into it too much in case the people watching this are players and not DMs. Um, if you're interested, pick up a copy of the book or ask me some specific questions, but I love that. And I love a lot of the characters. I already have an adventure planned with carrionettes. They remind me a lot of the, uh, I'm blanking on the name, but there was a monster that they created, that like that Wizards created for the Innistrad Plane Shift set that was, I think it was Creepy Doll. I think it was actually just called Creepy Doll uh, based off of the card from Innistrad. And Carrionettes are another kind of variation of that. The CR is a little bit different. The mechanics are a little bit different, but like Creepy Dolls, I, there is something just that triggers in my brain when I see one of those. And I really like, really, really like the monsters at the end of this. 
And again, I think part of that comes down to the fact that I can use them in games that are not strictly horror. I can create a horror encounter or a horror arc, but the entire uh, like game does not have to be horror focused. And I think that's where my mind is at when it comes to executing a lot of the material from this book. So final thoughts. What did I think, or what is my recommendation for Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft? Overall, I would recommend this book, especially to DMs. Whether you like horror or not, I think there is enough material in this book that is useful for DMs to incorporate into their games or for their players to use that it is definitely worth picking up. A couple of caveats. I don't think that I would pick this up if you are a new DM. I think there are plenty of other books that you could pick up first. I think this is better for fleshing out a catalog rather than for starting one. There is an adventure in it, like I mentioned before, but it's probably not an adventure that I would run really early. And I, I think that there are better choices for an early book to pick up. If your playgroup doesn't like horror and isn't into that kind of content, then I also think that it might not be worth your time to pick up a book like this. And I think that that just makes sense in terms of the genre. Although this book does do an excellent job providing warnings and talking about how to appropriately handle a session zero for a campaign like this, I really think that there is still a barrier to entry when it comes to different kinds of horror. And if your playgroup isn't into horror, there's no reason to kind of force it. And there's a lot of other content that exists out there. But overall, I think that this is a great example or like a great resource for creating uh, a lot of different kinds of adventures, obviously that fall into that horror genre. But as a fan, like I said previously of The Twilight Zone, I think that this book does a good job or could do a good job of creating that kind of episodic world, especially because of the way the mists work, where you're creating different pockets of uh, kind of tense and horrific adventures for your players. And depending on your group, maybe those are broken up by some levity in between. But I think it is a really worthwhile pickup, especially for more experienced DMs with groups that are a fan of the genre. If you have any questions about the material presented in the book, or if you want me to go into more depth on anything covered in Van Richten's, I'm happy to. My initial plan was just to make a review video, but if you want a deeper dive into the subclasses or the monsters, I can certainly start creating some of those videos as well. But as I always say, be safe, make smart life choices.